Hello and welcome to my lazy flood fill and procedural map generation game development tutorial. In this video, we'll be talking about the lazy flood fill algorithm, what it is, how it works, and how to implement it. As you probably know, the flood fill algorithm fills an area on a grid with some value. For example, most paint programs offer a flood fill function where the user can fill an area with some new color. The animated GIF on the left side of the screen shows the algorithm in action. A game I'm working on requires that I randomly generate biomes on my terrain. I want the biomes to look like blobs that have rigid edges and adjustable sizes. In order to accomplish this, I came up with what I call the lazy flood fill. You can see the results of this algorithm in the image on the right side of the screen. Instead of filling the entire black canvas with a new color, it only fills some of it, with the outer boundaries slowly dying off as the blobs grow larger. This works great for my use case for generating biomes, although I could see it also being used for generating height maps, by performing elevation additions and subtractions whenever a tile is filled. In order to write the lazy flood fill algorithm, we also need to write a normal flood fill algorithm, so really this is a tutorial for both. So how does lazy flood fill work? The 5x5 grid on screen will act as our tile map, where each cell is a tile. In a real game, we would use a much larger canvas, but this will do for the sake of simplicity. I will be discussing the information on the right side of the screen when it comes up. The first thing we have to do is choose a starting tile. This is where our flood fill will begin. I chose the center tile M. After choosing a tile, we need to push it to the back of a deck structure. You can see the contents of this deck on screen. So far, it only contains the tile M. Easy enough. Now let's get on with the actual algorithm. Take a look at step number one on the to-do list on screen. From this point forward, we'll be looping through this list until the lazy flood fill completes. The first step tells us to pop and fill the front tile in the deck. The M tile is now filled and has been popped off the deck. Next is where the lazy part comes into play. In the normal flood fill algorithm, we would set each of M's neighbors to the visited state, then push them onto the back of the deck. However, in lazy flood fill, there is only a chance that'll happen. We might just decide to forget about its neighbors and move on. To achieve this, we need to generate a random value between 1 and 100. If this random value is less than or equal to the chance variable you see on screen, then we will continue as normal by setting each of M's neighbors to visited and pushing them onto the back of the deck. Otherwise, if the random value is greater than the chance variable, then we will move on to the next tile in the deck and skip over the neighbors. Since our current chance variable is equal to 100, we will indeed be proceeding as normal. The neighbors H, L, N, and R were set to the visited state, indicated by the purple background, and pushed to the back of the deck. We only have to perform one additional step, which is to multiply our chance variable by some decay factor. In this example, the decay factor is 0.5, however in an actual game you will probably want to use something very close to 1.0, such as 0.999. If the decay factor is low, then the number of tiles affected by the flood fill will be low. If the decay factor is high, then the number of tiles affected by the flood fill will be high. It just depends on what you're looking for in a final result. Let's continue with the algorithm by looping back to step number 1. We popped the H tile from the front of the deck and set its state to filled, indicated by the blue background. Next, we need to generate a random value between 1 and 100. Let's say our random value is 75. Since this is greater than the chance variable, we skip the neighbor steps, multiply the chance variable by the decay value, and loop back to step number 1. The L tile is next. We pop it from the front of the deck and set its state to filled. Let's say our random value is 40, which is greater than the new chance variable of 25, so we once again skip the neighbor step. The N tile is next. Pop it from the front of the deck and set its state to filled. Let's say this time around our random value is 5, which is lower than our new chance variable of 12.5. Therefore, we push each unvisited neighbor to the back of the deck and set their states to visited. 
The next tile is R. We perform the same steps over and over again until the deck is empty. Here our random value is 25, so we skip the neighbors. The next tile is I. The random value is 90, so we skip the neighbors. The next tile is O. The random value is 70, so we skip the neighbors. The next tile is S. The random value is 3, so we skip the neighbors. The deck is empty, so we can exit the to-do list. And that's it. The algorithm is complete. As you can see, instead of flood filling the entire grid, we only filled a portion of it. As the chance variable shrunk smaller, it became increasingly less likely that the neighbors would be added to the deck, resulting in a blob that fades out as it grows larger. If you'd rather fill the entire grid, simply remove the chance and decay variables from the process. A few notes before we jump into the implementation. All code shown on screen will be pseudocode. This is to ensure that I'm not being biased towards any particular programming language. Everything done here can be achieved in every language, it's just a matter of understanding the concept and translating the code. My personal example will be built in the default game engine because that's what I'm most familiar with. After we cover the implementation, I'll show off an interactive HTML5 demo which you can play around with. This demo allows you to generate colored blobs using the lazy flood fill. Manipulating the decay factor and observing the results will help you achieve a solid intuition for how drastically the size of the blobs are affected by even the slightest change in decay. All of my source code can be found on GitHub totally for free if you're interested in seeing exactly how I wrote the program. The code is very simple. We start by passing start x and start y coordinates into the function. These indicate where the flood fill will begin on the grid. Next, we define a bunch of variables from the example we walked through together. The grid variable refers to the tile map or the canvas or whatever you're using. All values here are initialized to zero. The visited variable is assigned to the cells on the grid when they are added to the deck. The filled variable is assigned to the cells on the grid when they are filled. The chance variable expresses how likely it is that the neighbors of the current tile in consideration are to be added to the deck. The decay variable is a scalar which shrinks the chance variable. We're using 0.999 here instead of 0.5 like in the example because in a real game, this is a much more reasonable value to use. The deck variable is just an empty deck structure. Those are all the setup values we need. Next, we push the starting coordinates onto the back of the deck, then begin the while loop. This loop will continue until the deck is empty and no more grid cells should be filled. The first thing we do in the loop is pop a coordinate off the front of the deck. The coordinate is then filled. We then need to generate a random value between 1 and 100 and compare it to our chance value. If successful, then we enter the handle neighbors section. If unsuccessful, we skip the handle neighbors section and multiply the chance value by the decay value. This action will eventually cause the deck to become empty and the while loop will end. The handle neighbors section is just four copies of the exact same logic. We need to check all four neighbors of the current tile. That includes the coordinates y minus 1, x minus 1, x plus 1, and y plus 1. If these tiles are within the grid boundaries, and they are not yet filled, and they are not yet visited, then we simply push them to the back of the deck and set them to visited. And that's all there is to it. Let's move on to the demo. Okay, so here's the demo. Um, this You can find this on my website. I'll put a link in the description of this video uh, to get here. This is just to help you get a more intuitive understanding about how this lazy flood fill is working. So as you can see on the bottom of the screen, we have iterations equals 30. That's how many colored blobs are being drawn to the screen. Um, and then you have the decay value, which is that factor that you multiply by the chance value, um, which dictates how big or small the blobs are. And there's only a few controls here, like all of my demos. If you press the one button on your keyboard, it'll just generate a new map. So it'll generate 30 more iterations. And uh, the colors here are all randomized. Normally what you do is you wouldn't actually use colors here. You would just use values and then 
based on what the values are, you could translate them into something else. So maybe the red blobs would be a forest biome. Maybe the purple blobs would be a, a glacier biome or something like that. Um, that's my use case anyway. And then if you press the 2 button on your keyboard, you can see the iteration count decreasing at the bottom of the screen. That'll just decrease the number of blobs being drawn so you can see more clearly. Uh, lowest is 2, highest is 30, I believe. So let's go to 10. And uh, if you press the th uh, 3 button, it goes up. So 2 goes down, 3 goes up. If you press 4 on your keyboard, it will decrease the decay factor by 0 0.0005. And like I said, this does drastically de uh, decrease or increase the size of the blobs, even by just adjusting the decay factor a tiny bit, like I'm doing, um, because it is multiplied by the chance value, and the more you change the decay value, the more drastic that, ch that change is going to be. So if we go all the way down to the lowest value, you can see that they're super, super small. And as we increase, you can see they don't increase much here. But once you start getting up to 0 0.995, they start growing quite quickly. And then once you get to 0.995, they're pretty big. And you can go even higher. You can go to like 0.99995 or whatever you want to do and just grow them as big as you want. Um, and then if you press 6 on the keyboard, nothing will happen. So apparently that's not a thing. <laughs> so you have 1 to regenerate, 2 to go down in iterations, 3 to go up in iterations, 4 to go down in decay, and 5 to go up in decay. And yeah, you just interpret, interpret these values however you want. Uh, you could make a height map based on this, and just every time you overlap a, an already filled value, you increase or decrease the elevation by one. Or really, you just get creative with it. A lot of these procedural generation algorithms that generate height maps or just various interesting things, a lot of the times people ask questions on, like they'll, they'll get an algorithm, like say cellular automata, and they'll use it to generate a cave system. And then uh, they might ask how to um, like fill smaller cave sections but keep the bigger ones. And really, a lot of this just comes down to being creative. It's just how you interpret your map. So to answer that question, you just do you'd scan your map, and then every time you hit an open tile, that's like a floor and not the side of a cave, you would perform a flood fill algorithm like this, and you would count the number of tiles that were accumulated in that flood fill algorithm. And if it's below a certain number, then you'd fill that cave. And so there's no real like, here's an algorithm how to do this. It's really all just up to your own creativity and how you interpret the results of these things. Um, and if you put a bunch of these algorithms together and you interpret them all in the way that you want to interpret them, you do it intelligently, then you can create some really cool stuff. And that's all there is uh, to the demo. And uh, if you want to see the source code, go into the GitHub, and there's a folder called um, example. Open that, and then there's a script called tilemap.script. And if you open that uh, file, you can see the algorithm implemented in Lua, the Lua programming language, because that's what the default game engine uses. And you can see how I implemented this algorithm.